Hello Ranger Point Precision friends and family and a special howdy to all you Space Cowboys. Today we are going to be installing the PewView handguard on the Smith & Wesson 1854. This is not incredibly involved. If you follow along perfectly, you should be able to do this at home. Of course, at any time, if you have issues, you can hit us up at the support email below or the contact form at the top of the website. We've got pictures, videos, diagrams, all sorts of things that'll help you finish your lever gun and turn it into what you want it to be. So now, let's dive right into this. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to open the action. We are going to visibly check we do not see any ammunition in the chamber, none in the magazine tube, and there is none within our wingspan. We owe this to ourselves and those around us. Now, let's look at what is in the hardware. So now we have our hardware laid out. We went ahead and took it all out of the baggies. On this side right here, we're gonna wind up with four just set screws. These are what go through the side of the handguard and touch off on the barrel just to keep everything locked down nice and solidly. Now these six right here are gonna be associated with the heat shield. These right here are gonna be, two of them are gonna hold the top Picatinny rail on, and four of them are gonna hold the actual heat shield to the handguard. Now we've got two more longer screws here, and what these are, these longer two screws are gonna go through the side of the handguard and go into the factory supplied tenon on the 1854. One thing that I like to do before I get started is I'm gonna take a little bit of Loctite. In this one, I'm using purple. You can also use blue Loctite. But what I like to do is go ahead and throw a little bit of Loctite on the threads. That way, I can go ahead and get started by letting this set up a little bit. This is optional, but I like to do it. It helps me immensely on projects like this. So now we have our handguard, our heat shield, and our extended Picatinny rail. This handguard is the PewView handguard. Now I want you to notice right here on the back, if I could get this to focus, this is engraved with an S. That S means for Smith & Wesson. That helps you ensure that you have the correct parts before you get started. Now, one thing I wanna show you is this open end here is the muzzle end. This right here, this flange goes toward the receiver. We'll cover that more here later. Now we have got a heat shield. This heat shield will set on here and it'll act as a bridge, of course, to keep you from burning your hand when you're running your gun. Also that heat shield stands as the front stand for this extended Picatinny rail. Now if you notice, we didn't talk about hardware for this extended Picatinny rail. We're gonna reuse our factory Smith & Wesson hardware for this. Tools are very simple. The only thing you'll need are a T10 and a T15 Torx bit and something to twirl them. We have included Allen keys in the baggies, that way you guys don't need to have anything else at home. Of course, if you do have Allen keys at home, then you can use those as well. You'll also need a flathead screwdriver for removal of the factory rear sight. So double checking the gun, it is unloaded. Let's go ahead and remove our magazine tube. This is very simple, just by twisting down and pulling out. We're gonna set the magazine tube aside for safekeeping because we will be reusing it. Now, we're gonna to wanna to take this end cap off. The end cap is held on by two T10 screws. We're just gonna righty tighty lefty loosey this. That goes away, we will save that for later. We do not actually need it to finish our install. We just want to have our parts in case we need them later. We want to turn this thing back to factory or something. So we now have removed our the factory forearm will come off and we will lay that aside for safekeeping as well. So our factory tenon here is going to provide us with good service. We don't actually have to do all of the sanding and stuff like we did on the other models. This right here is going to work and work well. So we've got our handguard here. Now I want you to notice that this flange is going to go toward the receiver and this open end is gonna to go toward the muzzle. We've received many 9 p.m. and midnight emails where guys saying that the screw holes don't line up. Well, if you flip it 180, the screw holes will line up. So let's go ahead and seat this in our receiver, and boom. Now, we're gonna need the two longer screws, and those two longer screws are gonna go right there into the handguard and screw into the factory tenon. We're 
gonna flip it over and do the same. Now it is time for our heat shield. Correct orientation for the heat shield. You're gonna have two small screw holes and they are gonna point back toward the receiver. So these go on just like this. The heat shield just straddles the handguard and you'll line those two screw holes up. We have four of our previously Loctite heat shield screws. You can use the Allen key that is in the baggie, but of course I'm just gonna use mine. I have a really nice 330 seconds here and we're gonna install these four screws. Two on this side, two on the other side. So now you'll want to be really careful not to cross thread those. Once you get them in and get them screwed in, they will give you years of great service. But right here at this moment, we want to make sure that we're not boogering up the threads. If anything feels abnormal, stop. Do not coerce this. Do not force anything. Make sure everything just feels good when you're installing it. So now, just going to leave these two loose. That way, if we have any alignment issues on this other side, we can wiggle things around. Right now, we're not doing any final torque. All we're doing is just introducing these screws into the handguard through the heat shield. And again, like I said, if anything feels off, don't force it. We might actually need to go over here to this other side, back these off just a little bit more so that everything goes together. This is intended to be a nice tight fit. Our tolerance is really tight on this, so we need a little bit of wiggle room by leaving the fasteners loose. Now let's move on to the next one. And as you see, it just goes right in with no struggle. This is what we want. We don't want cross-threaded and boogered up threads. Now it's time for our four set screws. These set screws are gonna go in and just simply touch off on the barrel. We've already previously loctited these and there is no real torque spec. Literally all you want those to do is to go into these holes and just touch off on the side of the barrel. So we're just gonna go ahead and insert those. And again, we wanna be really careful not to cross thread anything. These are a 564. These go in on an angle here on the back side. So we'll go ahead and screw those in just like so. Now let's go to our forward position. And again, this is the same thing. Do not force anything, do not cross thread anything. I always like to use the small tools, that way I can't force anything because once you have a big tool in your hand, it gives you much more leverage. That right there is so super simple. Got a little bit of Loctite coming out on that, but that'll be okay. We'll figure that out here just a little bit with a clean rag. So we're going ahead and take on our other side. This is just the reverse side of the gun toward the front. Let's go ahead and put this set screw in. And then back here by the receiver, we've got another set screw that goes in on an angle. It's almost like a 45 degree angle from the top of the gun, from the side of the receiver. And again, be super careful not to cross thread these. These are just kissing off on the edge of the barrel, keeping everything set up solidly. So no final torques on anything yet. Let's go ahead and do our receiver rail. So do remember that we're gonna to need to be keeping this rear sight, this screw, and these two fasteners right here to put on the extended Picatinny rail that Ranger Point Precision offers. So let's go ahead and undo our rear sight. Simply righty tighty lefty loosey. And set this aside for safekeeping because we do not want to lose that. Now we're gonna use our T15 to remove these two screws. Again, retaining those two screws. We do not wanna lose those because they will be reused. So we'll set this factory receiver rail aside for safekeeping and let's bring in our PewView receiver rail. Naturally, this right here is gonna to go toward the heat shield and this right here is gonna house the factory rear sight. So we're just gonna set this right back down where it was we're gonna take our factory rear sight. We're gonna set it into this hole right here. And now being very careful not to cross thread anything, we are going to go ahead and get this started, but we're not cinching it 100% down yet. We still have two other screws to line up. 
So let me go ahead and take one of our factory screws here. Looks like there's already a little bit of Loctite on it, so I don't need to uh, add any. So that one right there is started. Take our other factory screw that we just removed from the top receiver rail, and it is started. So all three of those are ready. Now we have to worry about these two right here on the front. So now we have our previously Loctited screws. These are two of the six screws that are intended for the handguard. What these are going to do is they're going to go into this forward slot in the receiver rail. You see the opposite end of our factory ghost ring. These are going to go in and we're going to be very careful not to cross thread these because our tolerances are kind of tight. Everything's made in Texas, in USA, by people that take pride in their job. So now we are nearing the end. I'm going to take our magazine tube here. Of course, the follower goes toward the receiver. This knurled end goes toward the muzzle. So what you do is you'll slide that in like this. So once you've gotten your magazine tube pushed in, you will grab it by these knurls and rotate it, pushing this pin up into this retainer. This is what it'll look like once you're done. Now we're going to go through and we're going to put all of our final torques on all of our fasteners. So as stated before, I'm using my own tools, but there are factory Allen keys in the hardware baggies that you can use. Well, we're just going to go ahead and do a good old snug up on everything. All that's doing is kissing the bottom of the barrel there. So there's no real torque spec. You'll just feel it, just touch off, and then you're done. This right here keeps the rear of the hand guard locked into the receiver just by pushing down on it a little bit. So now let's go ahead and go over to our tenon screws. We'll go ahead and tighten that up. Give that a little bump. And all we're doing is we are using just hand tight. Nothing's incredibly tight. We're going to just snug everything up and let the Loctite do its job. We'll get our little set screw right there. Again, all we do is touch off on the barrel. Then we're going to get our heat shield screws and go ahead and tighten those down. Boom. You see that I'm just using my fingers. There's not an incredible amount of torque. Let's roll this over. Let's get these two as well. Now that we've got that, let's get these two on top of the heat shield. Boom. Boom. And then all we're going to do is go ahead and take our Torx, snug up the receiver screw. Boom. That's all it takes is just a little bit of torque. So you don't have to do anything crazy with torque wrenches or anything like that. It's literally just hand tight. Let the Loctite do its job. Now, look at that. We've got it installed. But we might want to transform the back end of this thing. Let's do a butt stock. Now the factory butt stock doesn't look bad, but uh-oh, check this out. We've got a 1854 specific butt stock for this. It's made of 6061 aluminum, and we've already added our optional ammo quiver. So to do this, it's very simple. You can either utilize your factory screw, or you can go get, at, on the Ranger Point website, you can go get the quick takedown screw for the 1854. Since this is factory, we're just going to take a T20 Lefty Lucy on this thing. Pop that out, set it aside, give it a little wiggle, boom, got it, factory butt stock, we'll set him on there, and that is that. Let's take our factory screw or our ranger point takedown screw, righty tighty, and boom, there it is. So here we are, we have successfully installed the PewView handguard on this Smith & Wesson 1854 and we have got our buttstock here on the end of it. This thing is looking good. 
Of course, in this video, I tried to be as thorough as possible. If you feel like you've missed something, maybe rewind until you could see something that you've missed. If you need further assistance than that, then hit us up at the support at rangerpointprecision.com support email. We're very, very quick to answer emails like that, except for holidays and weekends sometimes. Of course, there's the contact form there at the top of the website. We hope you guys enjoy your product for years to come. We'll see you next video.